depression for 21 years. Like David sharing from the heart, so beautiful. I uh, almost didn't make it out of college. Got almost immobilized with depression. I could barely function. But it, I kind of identify with David. I, I was gritty and I was tough and I, I, I crawled through and I made it. And I got into medical school and I almost didn't make it out of medical school. Got severely depressed and almost immobilized. And the amount of material that they throw at you every day in medical school is pretty huge. Almost didn't make it out of my psychiatric residency. Same thing happened. Played havoc with the first 10 years of my marriage to my late wife until we were exposed to the principles. But I had no idea that I was creating the experience of depression. In the late 1980s, they did some first what they call activation studies. They've done hundreds of them now with vari variations. The first one was just with six people. And they hooked them up to a PET scanner. And later they hooked them up to an fMRI. And what those instruments do is they, they show part of the physiology of, of the brain metabolism. They don't read people's minds or anything like that, but they show whether there's balance, imbalance, what's happening in the metabolism. And they got a baseline of all six of these people. And these six people that they, uh, that they did this for had not been sexually abused. They had not been combat in combat, injured, where people were, were killed or injured, or they themselves. They were people that were, quote, average human beings, who had experienced some things in their life. But many of them, when they asked them for three minutes to think upsetting thoughts. They thought about when their grandmother died or when their dog died. For three minutes, they thought about this in a way that they got into the past memory. And in three minutes of upsetting thinking, every one of those six people created a quite clearly measurable biochemical imbalance in their brain in three minutes. I'm going to ask you some thought habits, and uh, all I'd ask you to do is to rate yourself zero to five on these thought habits. Zero would be, Doc, uh, those kind of thoughts just kind of go in one side of my mind and out the other. That'd be a zero. Five would be, I get so tangled up in that kind of thinking that if there's a Hall of Fame, I should at least get honorable mention. Okay, so the first one I say is worry. Any, do I have any warriors here at the house? Huh? Getting caught up in the what ifs. They say that rabbits really multiply really fast, right? But you leave two rabbits in a room, and you come back 10 minutes later, there may be something started. But how many rabbits are there going to be walking around 10 minutes later? Two. You put two of these little suckers in your head, and you let them co-mingle for 10 minutes. And how many do you have in your head? How many? Hundreds, thousands. I'll take on any two rabbits any day with my two worries. A lot of people, give me a number here from the crowd out of five. Three. Three, okay. Guilt. Beating ourselves up for past mistakes. I often, I often say to people, I say, you know, some of us have have regrets of a couple of things before the age of five. And they go, five? I said, well, I started early, you know. <laughs> but zero to five, rating yourself, be either, we either learn from our mistakes and realize that we're human beings on a journey, stumbling and falling. If you ever watch it, we, we've got four, well, we've got a number of young grandchildren, but two little boys right now that had gone through the stage where they were learning to walk and two twin boys, not an equal twin. And they'd walk and they'd take a few steps and they'd fall on their butt, you know? And they'd laugh. They'd get up again, they'd take about one more step, and they'd fall on their butt. They don't get, like, after the third time they fall, they don't say, I'm never gonna learn this. 
I'm just going to stay here and never walk. Right? They don't do that. They, they're getting kicked the fact they got another step. Two. Give me a number, somebody. I'm going to put five. I know some people that do that. <laughs> Resentment. Holding on to anger and hurt from the past. Oh, I hear a bunch of zeros out there. I can tell it. Seven. Seven. <laughs> five out of five. Being upset when things are not the way Bill Pettit wants them to be, or the you, way you want them to be. Got a number, anybody? Four, I got a four. Overanalyzing. Oh. Honey, I think I hit gold. Overanalyzing. People say, what do you mean by overanalyzing? I say, you know, when you, when you keep saying, I've got to figure this out, I've got to figure this out, even though... It'd be bad enough if you went this way, but you know what? It spirals down, doesn't it? Even when you're going further and further into confusion and uh, mood change. So five out of five, okay, over analysis. Unresolved grief, not coming to peace with past losses. And I'm not judging somebody that has trouble getting past a loss. But I think it make, does it make sense that to the degree that we don't come back to the present, we have less available to those in our lives that are alive? Does that make sense? So again, no shoulds, no shoulds. But I see people sometimes that somebody that they've lost 18, 20 years ago, they can't even mention their name without the tears streaming down their face. And they admit that it keeps them from being present with their husband or their wife or their children so I don't know we'll put 4.5 out of 5 sometimes I sense people they, they're having terrible panic attacks they're having even dissociative episodes they're having all these kinds of physical symptoms and I say how many hours do you spend in stressful thinking on a day and they say oh maybe an hour an hour and 10 minutes and I know that's not true but I know they're not lying to me. They're so used to doing it that they're only counting when they get really, really, really bad. So I turn the question around and I say, let me say it another way. Of the 18 hours that you're awake, back to your question earlier, how many of those hours are you at a quiet peace? Well, not very many. <laughs> quiet peace? What do you mean? I said, I mean a quiet peace. Or you're just in a quiet peace. You're just in the present moment. They were saying in a quiet, nice feeling. Maybe, maybe three hours out of 18. That leaves 15 hours for what? Stressful thinking. Because we're either in one or the other. People say, Every experience is just an experience, and that's fine. But I think if you get lost in the woods, it's okay to get lost in the woods, but you want to know, first of all, to realize that you're lost. And then you want to know how to get back home. Does that make sense? So it's, 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 that's different than saying, oh, I'm lost in the woods, it's fine. I'll just keep going, I'll keep, stay lost. Well, bad things might happen. And if we just... We're not in tune to when we're lost, and that w when we're lost, it is a very simple thing to do, but there is something to do, or to stop doing what we would normally do, I guess. And, I'll, and we'll see if this makes sense to you. And again, I'm not asking you to believe what I say. But I think there's at least six different ways, and there's many ways, but I'm going to take the six where I suddenly, clinically, with hundreds and thousands of patients, at some point... I started to see that they were using the gift of, the gift of thought in, in about six or seven ways that seemed to cause problems. <laughs>